we sit up on a little tump within sight of May Hill on the outskirts of the village of Much Markle. Historically, Markle has had a lot of traditional standard orchards. I've got a map here which shows how many there were in 1888, a first edition Ordnance Survey map. We know that the Home Orchard here and the Greg's Pit Orchard adjoining, they predate 1785. That's a long cultural history and tradition of orcharding and no doubt cider making. When I came here, the orchard looked like a wood. It was abandoned, uh, bramble, docks, high as your chest. Um, and you couldn't see that the orchard trees were in rows. I didn't know what varieties they were, and I needed to start somewhere. So I went and saw Bill, and this is a picture of Bill. He used to win the prize parsnips, as you can see, in the village show every year, I'm told. He had the knowledge. He'd lived here for the best part of 40 years. In his head, he knew what was in the orchard. He'd planted some of the trees. So I'd drawn a map, and I went along to the nursing home with the map, and we walked through the orchard in his head, and he helped me identify many of the trees that I didn't know what they were. Once I'd restored the orchard, it was, well, what am I going to do with the fruit? And my first year, I took the fruit to Westerns, and I made a tiny contribution to the tump in the yard where we used to tip the fruit at Westerns. I took it up in fruit boxes in the back of my car, not in a lorry that went over the Weybridge. And then I thought, well, maybe I can have a go at this. And so I found that Jean Knoll was making cider in the village, and I went along to see her, and we did a deal. From there, for the best part of seven, eight years, every year I made my cider and perry with Jean. And now I've learnt since then to record, be meticulous, both in what I harvest, when I harvest, how I use particular varieties, but also to record what I'm doing. So I have a record now going back 10, 15 years of what I harvested when. And if you look back through those records, there's a trajectory. One can see the variance, the variation, and that really matters because if we're to continue improving and making better artisan product, we need to have that learning. The orchard year really defines our life here in January or early February. I'll prune the trees. Then early March, the peri pears will start to look pregnant with blossom. And then we're into the cider apples. And the cider apples run right through to first two weeks of June, still in blossom, some varieties. And then we'll start to walk the orchards because that's when we start planning. Um, late July, um, it's time to see what sort of a set there is because we pick everything up by hand. We're not using machine. Once harvest is nearly ready, we'll be walking those orchards daily to look at what's down on the ground, what's ripe. We had a very kind interview in the Sunday Times magazine last year that described our sparkling cider as simple, elegant, not bumpkinish. So I think I want that as a t-shirt slogan. That's going into uh, delis, it's going into restaurants. Uh, we even export it. Um, we export to Edinburgh. I think we're allowed to say we export to Scotland. Uh, it's going to Italy, to the Marsh, um, and it's going to Amsterdam this year. We've got a lot to thank the big guys for, and let's remember where the likes of John Thatcher, Henry Weston started. They started with a press. We're no different, except that we're still using it. Uh, small difference in turnover, small difference in output, uh, big difference in how we make.